I want you all to start by closing your eyes. And now, focus on a physical attribute of yourself that you wish you could change. This could be your hair, eyes, nose, height, weight, and so on. For me, it's my voice. I just can't stand the thing. Now, I'm sure you're all thinking, wait, this guy hates his voice, but he's giving a TED talk? Yes, yes I am. So now while your eyes are still closed, I want you to focus on something else. This time, I want you to focus on a, on a social identity you have that you don't actively tell others about. This could be one that makes you feel ashamed, or maybe one that makes you feel like the minority when you walk into a room. Next, I want you to focus on one other identity. But this time, I want you to focus on the one that you are the most proud about, the one that you wear on your sleeve every single day, and the one that you shout from the rooftops. With both of these identities in mind, go ahead and open your eyes. So what's the difference between them? Does one provide you experience to live life while the other restricts you? Does, the other, does one provide you insight while the other restriction? Most importantly, how does each relate how you connect with other people? So I just posed four questions to you, but now I'm sure you have a question for me. Why? Why does this matter? So let's go back to the two identities. I didn't ask any of you to share yours with me, largely because this room would just become sheer and utter chaos with everyone shouting all at once. So instead, I'll go ahead and tell you a little bit more about myself, the identity that I hide, and the one that I shout from the rooftops. So with that said, let's start on the roof. Many of you may be unaware, and others may have assumed, that I identify with the LGBTQ IAX community. More specifically, I identify as gay. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> now again, I know what you're thinking. This is just going to be another TED Talk where some gay guy is going to whine about how unfair the world is. False. But I do want to take you all on a journey back in time to the cultural hub that was rural Oklahoma in 2013. I was a wide-eyed, freshman college student who was getting ready to explore the world and to explore myself. Growing up, I always knew there was something a little bit different about me from my peers. While they were talking about the girls that they liked and the relationships that they wanted to start, I would try and relate, but just couldn't. But instead of exploring what made me different, I hid the aspects of my personality, speech, mannerisms, and even attire out of fear that I would be ostracized by my family, friends, and community. Little did I know that coming out and embracing who I truly was and am would drastically change my life forever. Instead of losing good friends, I found out who my true friends were. Instead of being ostracized by my community, I was embraced by a new one. And instead of losing family, I added to it. Now, before all of this could happen, I had to start by actually telling someone. Fortunately for me, I had the support and love of my then friends and now brothers, Cody and Jeremy. Without their love and support throughout my entire coming out process, and even today, I likely would have taken the 12-story drop from my freshman residence hall, joining the nearly 43% of suicide victims ages 15 to 25 who identify as LGBT. Although many people do not consider it a social identity, there are others, like myself, who identify as post-suicidal. Because the truth is, suicide, unlike humans, does not discriminate. Suicide does not care if you are gay or straight, white or Hispanic, male or female. It can come for any of us. And it came for me very early on in my process. I hit a time where I was more alone, more isolated, more afraid than ever. And I just couldn't handle it. Fortunately, one night, Cody and I were coming back from the gym, and he could tell that something was wrong. And so he just asked me, are you OK? Not even 10 seconds later, I was crying into his arms, and I was explaining my fears, my pain, and finally my plan. And he looked at me and said, how can you be so selfish? He explained that the pain that I would cause myself would also hurt those that I would leave behind. But instead of judging me, he embraced me, and he connected with me until he knew that I would be OK. These different parts of ourselves, these different identities, these different aspects, can come together in what we call your multidimensional identity, or what I like to call your you identity. This process called identity synthesis is what enables us all to use our race, ethnicity, gender, religion, socio socioeconomic status, and sexual orientation to better connect with the world around us 
and make positive impacts on people through our work and personal interactions. Don't believe me? Let's take one more journey back in time through my time within university housing. It was a typical Sunday, and I was our on-call personnel for the weekend. A friend had stayed over, and we were going to go get lunch the next day when we woke up. So naturally, I got a call right before we were going to go. It was the front desk, and they had informed me that there was a suicidal resident in the building. And let me tell you, I have never gotten dressed so fast in my life. The campus police and I were at that student's store within three minutes. And fortunately, nothing had happened. While they were going through their protocol and asking the questions that they needed to ask, I noticed a tattoo on the young man's chest. It was a nautical star that at the time was a very popular tattoo for gay men to get. So knowing this, I asked him, is your, sexual, is, your, is your attempts of suicide relating to your sexual orientation? And he froze. And I could see the truth in him. Rather, I could see myself in him. Because I had embraced both my sexual orientation and my post-suicidal identities, I was able to connect with that young man. And I am happy to say that he did get the help that he needed and actually graduated from college later that year. So. Always remember that these identities, these aspects of yourself, do not define you, but rather they make up your you identity. And always remember that embracing your identities and living your truth can help better the world around you and even save a life. Thank you.